And tonight, it will be the Granite of Quincy College against the Lions of Eastern Nazarene. Tell me a little bit, Buck, about how this whole Jim Sheets tournament came about. Well, uh, Jim Sheets has done a, a lot in the community, uh, b not only being a former mayor, but he's very involved at ENC and Quincy College as a teacher or a professor at both schools. And uh, I think it's a, a way to not only recognize Jim for his efforts working with both, both schools over the years and the city of Quincy, but also to uh, give the kids something special to shoot for as they play in or the Jim Sheets Cup, which is, I thought, pretty unique. And the athletic director, Jack Raymer, had asked us if we could come down and help out with it, and we're more than happy to. Jim's a great guy and deserves the recognition. And the actual cup itself will be presented a little bit later on. These two teams have already played two games, and Quincy College has already won the, the cup, actually, but it's, it's really all about getting out and playing some basketball for these young guys and so regardless of who wins or doesn't win the cup it's just another good opportunity to play one another and it, it's an absolutely a, a, a real good opportunity and uh, back in the in the 70s and early 80s when I coached at Quincy Junior College back at that time we used to play a number of college JVs because it was a two-year school and you could not you know you had to try to get uh, games so ENC's JV team is actually playing uh, the Quincy Grand tonight, which is great, and uh, you get some pretty good, uh, pretty good basketball play. Last game, Quincy Grand beat the ENC JVs, 85-75. So hopefully, we'll see a good game tonight. Number 23, and I'm sure we will as we get set to get things started. The Lions of Eastern Nazarene in their white uniforms with the red lettering. And as is our tradition, Coach Buckley, we always defer to you for the colors for Quincy College. Quincy College. It's uh, blue and white. Doug Scott is the head coach for the Granite and Sean Foley with the Lions. And for you, Mr. Buckley, uh, this must bring back a lot of memories as you did your share of coaching at Quincy back when it was Quincy Junior College and now Quincy College. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, played at that time in the Greater Boston Small College Conference, uh, which is no longer in existence, but there were a number of teams in it that have four-year programs that uh, now play at uh, the NCAA Division Three level like Wentworth, uh, Mass College of Pharmacy was in that league back mm -hmm. there, and Emerson College, which is also Division Three now. And I also coached in this building quite a bit when I was the head coach at Curry College. We had a lot of games with ENC at that time. All right. About set to get things started. Anthony Peacock, Greg Thomas, Damani Scott, Jerome Stevens, Julian Mincy, starting for Quincy College. And we'll get to the Lions starters in just a moment. Quincy in a 2-3 zone to start up. It's Micah Vasquez. Now deep. Back to the corner for Vasquez. Jorge Viegas. And a three. Joey DePina. 
Great ball moving by EMC that time. Work the perimeter until they get the good shot. They come right back down and Julian Mincy was stripped. Back the other way, too strong that time for Joey DePina. But he got it back and scores. So the Lions have the first five. Uh, Gregory Thomas. <laughs> Nothing on the baseline there for Damani Scott. High off the glass, won't fall. For Thomas, tapper Julian Mincy wouldn't fall. Jorge Villegas now for the Lions. Aaron Dermanio. And now DePino once again. Germanio to the corner. Three falls from the far corner from Jorge Villegas. They have the outside shot working for them right now. And that's from the good, good ball movement and getting the open shot. Very patient offensively. From the wing, air ball thrown up by Damani Scott. Scott's averaging 21 points per game. Two minutes in, Lions with the first eight points. Micah Vasquez. Now Villegas. Inside, that was altered. Might have been deflected by Julian Mincy. Gregory Thomas now for the Granite. Trying to go inside for Mincy instead. We'll get our first foul. And they'll call that on Alonzo Minnis. Yeah, Minnis was in good position, but he definitely has initiated the contact. Good move that time offensively by Scott Hankerson. First effort by Scott won't go. He'll get one more. Any games really stick out for you, Coach, for... All the years he coached in Quincy with Quincy Junior College, I know there was a championship game I distinctly remember. Yeah, they, they, back in uh, 1983, we won that Greater Boston Small College Conference, and uh, we played at the uh, championship game because we had the best record during the season, so we hosted the tournament. All the tournament games were played at the old Quincy Votech gym, and that was a great day. Uh, I believe you actually announced it for KBC I was there. back at that game. And 1983, that was a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago, and it was a great. I remember right off the tap, we had a special tap play. Uh, the game was over after the tap. Now a steal and stripped and fouled. And when I was. say the game was over after the tap, people are saying, what is he saying? Well, we had a special <laughs> tap play. We had never dunked off the... Off, but we felt we could get a dunk off the uh, tap. Jimmy Conboy was our center from North Quincy High School and played for the Q. He's a thousand point scorer. He tap tips the ball to Pudge Gill. Pudge takes a couple dribbles like he's going to set the offense up. Conboy circles, takes a back screen, and Pudge hit a perfect glob pass to him for a dunk to start the game. And it, the home crowd just went nuts. And at that point in time, uh, you know, to get a dunk on the very first play, it was. Uh, it was really special, and I'll never forget that moment. So you talk about games, that one sticks out for me. Damani Scott makes one of two free throws after being fouled by Nairon Dermanio. All the way won't go, and the rebound clear by Anthony Peacock. Peacock averaging 22 points and 13 rebounds per game for the Granite. And here's Peacock right back down inside. And an easy two for Julian Mincy. Nice job there in the post. He, once he got it, he got settled, didn't force the shot, turned and faced the basket to make sure he had a good shot. That was a good post move. Now DePina, way off the mark, falls right into the hands of Peacock. Jerome Stevens for the granite. Dropped it off inside, and it'll be free throws for Julian Mincy. And they'll call the Lions foul. And free throws for Mincy. Lots of folks who have followed 
Quincy Junior College, Quincy College over the years, would certainly remember some of the coaches who have gone on to other things, some of them even into politics. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, way back when, when I was coaching, when I left to go to Curry College, uh, Mayor Bill Phelan became the, the head coach. He was the coach at Quincy College for two years. Uh, one of the guys that's in the stands here was the former principal of Quincy High School and on the school committee, Frank Santoro. He played at Quincy College, didn't play for me, played before I did. But he actually drove the bus for our teams uh, early on. He was the bus driver. I have a, a story I can tell about that. Maybe not right this minute. But, uh, <laughs> Frank Santoro. We might fit that in, though, before we're done. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll tell it now. we got a, we got a minute. But, Frank, we were playing at Essex Agricultural. And Frank was our bus driver. We were up there warm up, both teams warming up. No officials, no officials, no, no officials to end up showing up. So the opposing coach came to me and asked me, that, uh, I hate to tell you, we don't have any official. I said, I don't, it's, up, it's up to you, I said. But our bus driver played uh, basketball at Fitchwood State College. He's a good basketball player. He's refereed a little bit. I said, our bus driver, are you willing to referee if you don't mind? So Frank Santoro, in his dockside shoes and dungarees and a sweatshirt, refereed a <laughs> college basketball game. And it's the ultimate double dip story because he was getting paid to drive the bus, <laughs> and then they paid him to do the game. Just fantastic. Which, team, those, got, which team got the benefit of the calls that night? Well, I think we won that ball game. <laughs> oh, what a block. <laughs> Jerome Stevens with the block there. And a substitution. Devano Clark. Comes in replacing Micah Vasquez. 8-3 in favor of the Lions of Eastern Nazarene College. I have started out sc strong scoring the first eight. They haven't been able to find the bucket in a while. And there's a shot clock violation called against the Lions. So that time they were too patient looking for a good shot. Didn't get it a shot off in time. Substitutions for Quincy College. As Gavon Whitewell comes into the game. Out of the corner, the three ball. Short that time for Jerome Stevens. Stevens having a great season, averaging a double-double, 17 points, 11 rebounds per game. Now Villegas to the wing, a high arcing three is off the mark for Cawthorn. Great inside-out action on the pass, just didn't get the shot to go down. Gregory Thomas, now Stevens to the corner. Three out of the corner, not falling for Greg Thomas. Back come the Lions. Inside, oh, and a block just right out of the air by Anthony Peacock. Just put it right on his hip. Inside and wouldn't fall for Damani Scott. And we have a foul called on the Lions. They'll get Devano Clark for that foul. Some of the other coaches in years gone by that did some of their coaching here in Oh Quincy. yeah, a lot of people uh, probably that are uh, my age would remember Earl Vermillion, who also worked in the recreation department in Quincy. He was the head basketball coach. That's where I first uh, I was at a, a volunteer assistant with Earl Vermillion for two years uh, before I became a head, a head coach. And I learned quite a bit from Earl. Uh, and and uh, a couple of tries and nothing, and back comes Damani Scott on the drive. Oh. Nice job. But that, they got Devon the ball white wall. Now they're starting to press. They're going to try to put some pressure on. ENC now with the 8 6 lead. They led 8 nothing, and we got a foul. So after the Lions got the first 8, the Granite have come back with the last six. And a foul called back on back Matthew Cawthorn. About coaches, a teacher in Quincy was also a coach of basketball at Quincy Junior. 
Wayne Hamilton, a lot of people would remember Wayne. Um, he was uh, my predecessor, and he, his son was an excellent base, uh, basketball player, played for Holbrook High School, and ended up playing at North Adams State. And Devano Clark, fouled by Gervon Whitewall. Zach Leibowitz in the game now for the Granite. And I think when you go back to the archives of Quincy basketball coach, a lot of names weren't coaches, but great players in their own right over the years. And you could oh, yeah. have a who's who there. I know. It's amazing how many people uh, played. Uh, most of the players that I coached when I was there were from Quincy, uh, Braintree, Weymouth area. And um, oh, nice most of the players that I had used. Oh, a great steal. Back the other way. And oh, there's. He slammed it home. An easy <laughs> two there for Damani Scott, who now has four points. That was uh, some kind of play by Scott. Yeah, a couple right. of names come to mind. Uh, Jimmy Conboy, who played at North Quincy High School and came to Quincy College. He's my only 1,000-point scorer at Quincy Junior. He scored 1,000 points, which is kind of common in college, but for a two-year school, that's pretty good scoring. And uh, Paul Pudge Gill. Ooh, that looked like steps, but... Pudge Gill was, uh, anybody in Quincy remembers Pudge playing for North Quincy High. Oh, it's down the other end. Jerome Stevens trying to slam it home, got fouled. 15-10, Eastern Nazarene leading Quincy College. 12.06 to go here in the first half. Pudge, Pudge Gill played at Quincy College, and, uh, and then I left, and he had one more year, year left at Quincy, and I went to Curry College. The year later, I recruited Pudge to, part, to Curry, and we won the Greater Boston Small College Conference Championship at Quincy Junior, and then Pudge came over, and we won the Commonwealth Coast Conference uh, at, at Curry College, and we were the first team to win that, and for like, the record uh, stood for like 20 years, uh, 18 to 20 years, somewhere in that period. Uh, before Curry won that conference again. so A couple of free throws there for Jerome Stevens and now some full court pressure from the Granite. Conboy and uh, Gill both went to North Quincy High as did Steve Belcastro who's still playing now. You see him still playing in men's leagues and uh, it's a lot of good players. Nice move to the basket there by Alonzo Menace, who has seven points. One of my favorites is uh, he's a referee now and is, has coached quite a bit, Paul Donahue. Damn. Paul went to BC High and went to, came to Quincy College. Uh, Gary Donato from Quincy High School. Gary's an interesting story. He came to Curry, best free throw shooter I ever, ever coached. He just... He went to the line, he was automatic. When we get in overkind games or close games with the other team at a foul, we just give him the ball, he'd go to the line. I remember one time he hit seven for seven in, in overtime for us to beat Bunker Hill Community College. But Gary, after going to Quincy College, and this is what we talk about, how the school is great for kids to, yep. to move on. He, they didn't have baseball at Quincy that, at that particular time. Well, Gary played basketball, but he went to Suffolk and played on the Suffolk baseball team as well as graduating from Suffolk University. So a lot of success stories, not only people in general, but a lot of the athletes that get an opportunity to continue playing sports that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Blocking foul called on the Lions on Alonzo Minnis. So with 10.59 to go here in this first half, Eastern Nazarene led 8-0, now, now lead 17-15. Free throws for Cameron Mason. That's a point that I think is most important, Buck, when we talk about watching these young guys playing here tonight. An opportunity to keep playing a game they've probably played since they were first able to bounce a ball. Exactly, and it really does give them that opportunity. And... Uh, 
talking to uh, athletic director Jack Bramer says it's really the uh, second ch chance to, 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 to get it, to play it you know most of these kids have played in high school at some level or others and it really gives them a chance to if not go on after this this is their opportunity to, to play what they love and a lot of these guys played at some very good high school programs as well before they came here yeah Just saw Cameron Mason, who was shooting those free throws. He's from Weymouth High School. Now we got a delay as the shot clock did yeah, not begin. Thomas Janig and Greg Thomas played at Catholic Memorial. And Anthony Peacock played at Braintree High School. So you've got a lot of players. One thing that happened with the coming of the MBTA to Quincy made it more accessible for other players because it's a commuting college. And it really made, makes it more accessible to players not only in Quincy and the South Shore General, but other areas of Greater Boston can access Quincy College very easily. So, and uh, we saw that difference. So a little debate with the shot clock. Sean Foley is the coach for the Lions, as we mentioned earlier, Doug Scott, in his third year with Quincy College, a young coach, and for the coaches, too, an opportunity. I, I, I think of so many instances where you had kids in high school at any sport, at any level, when their high school career ended, they knew that they probably weren't going to play anymore, but... You come here, you come to Quincy College, and you got a great opportunity to continue to play. Right, exactly. It's just, it, just, it gives them that chance. And obviously the most important reason is to, to continue their education. A lot of kids aren't sure what they want to major in. Or, so Quincy College gives them that second chance at pursuing their education as well. Great move inside that time. And to come to Quincy College is most certainly affordable. When you look at the state schools, you look at the private schools, Quincy College is dramatically less money. And as you said, the opportunity to continue your education and also maybe do something you'd love to continue doing as we're seeing here on the floor tonight. Wow. There's a three thrown in for Antonio Luzon. Mr. Nazarene now with a 22 to 16 lead. We talked about how these two teams have played twice already this season. Quincy College has won both of those games. And as you said earlier, Buck, second time these two teams played was a 10 point game. Close game as the travel is called on Damani Scott. Exactly, it was a closer game. And you know, the old adage in, uh, in any sport, it's hard to beat a team three times in one season. And, yeah, Quincy College right now is is finding that, that he, the Lions are giving them all they can handle. Nine minutes and 48 seconds to go here in the first half. <laughs> Hesitation that time and throwing and it away by Vasquez. Vasquez. And then losing the handle was Cameron Mason. And right back come the granite. Here's strong drive to the basket, just short there for Whitewall. They call a foul on Cameron Mason. Picks a, up his second foul. What a nice drive and effort by Whitehall. He didn't get the, the basket to go down, but he took it to the strong to the basket. You always talk about when you penetrate, get it to the glass if you can. Good things will happen. That time the ball just spun out for him, but great move. Jorge Villegas for the Lions. And now Devano Clark. And now Vasquez once again for DePina. Out of the corner. Micah Vasquez with his first points. And Eastern Nazarene takes a nine point lead at 25 16. 8.48 to go here in the first half. White wall, and pulling up off the mark there was Zach Leibowitz. 
saved but grabbed by Jorge Villegas. And back come the Lions. Inside. Wouldn't fall, and right back come the Granite. Oh, nice defensive play, though, by hustle right Antonio there. Luzon. Antonio Luzon, just beautiful hustle, diving for the basketball, preventing an easy basket for the Granite that time. And back in man-to-man. -man. The Lions have been switching man-to-man -man in a 3-2 zone. Anthony Peacock's shot won't fall. Peacock with one bucket thus far tonight. Eastern Nazarene with a nine point lead at 25-16. Oh, nice drive to the basket, but it just hung on the iron, no good. And we gotta get a foul. Called on the Lions. Nick Tebow uh, with a good effort, but he went over the top going after that offensive rebound. It, uh, at that time it was, the referee was right on top of the call. At the line will be Zach Leibowitz. Oh, excuse me, he's off the line. It's, they're going to put Whitehall on the on the line. Does not get it to go. We got another call on the rebounding. Wow, they call the foul inside. That falls on Vasquez. I didn't see that. Peacock oh. makes the first one. He'll get one more. Three points for Peacock, who leads the team in scoring, averaging 22 points per game. And the Granite back to within seven at 25-18. That's a nice move to the basket there for Joey DePina, who has nine points. And we've got a foul down the other end. And and boy, we got a injured player for the Lions. That's Micah Vasquez, who has helped to the bench. Okay. Anytime you see an ankle or a knee turn. Look like a twisted knee. Yeah, that's, angle, that's what I he, thought, but too. I don't want to make it, that diagnosis, but that's what it looked like. Zach Leibowitz will get free throws. You were talking about some of the uh, players in years gone by who have played for Quincy Junior College. Quite a who's who list, especially for folks from Quincy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of people uh, remember uh, Chief Bobby Crowley, the police chief in Quincy. He was uh, played for Quincy College as well. And uh, back when it was QJC, interesting enough, it have not always been the Granite. With the comeback of sports here the last couple of years, the name Granite has been used. Before that, uh, we were known as the Quincy Jaguars, which I always thought was kind of strange. I don't remember seeing any Jaguars up by the quarries <laughs> at all. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> and before the Jaguars, it used to be the QJC Collegians. But there was a number of players that wore one of those uniforms. And Devano Clark with a nice move to the basket for the Lions, and they lead 29-19, but a quick answer from Anthony Peacock. Another another person a lot of people would know is Drew Shealy, who was the Quincy Commissioner of Public Health for quite a while. I think he's now down in Situate, but uh, he was uh, one of my point guards. I always told him, I said, Drew, you're the worst point guard I ever coached. He got a big boot out of that. <laughs> How many people did you tell that to? Probably more than him. <laughs> Jorge Villegas now with his second bucket. He's got five points. And again, the Lions of Eastern Nazarene take a 10-point lead at 31-21. Back in the 3-2 zone here. Six and a half minutes ago in the first half. And a block inside, but a whistle. And we'll get a Lions foul. I 
I know when the students who come here to Quincy College as a two-year school, aside from the opportunity to stay in school, and as you say, a lot of them will transfer to another school at some point. Some of the academic services that they provide here are terrific, including free tutoring and career services. Those two right there just tell me that's a great opportunity for uh, a young man or woman to come here and learn more about the school. Student accessibility services are available as well, and of course they always have an academic advisor, so yeah, they're doing things right. The half-court trap by call it travel. Like Quincy College and it caused, it caused the turnover. Even though they didn't get a steal off of it because uh, the Lions had to rush that a little bit and it caused the travel. And another travel called. Right now here at Quincy College aside from their basketball program they have men's soccer. They have cross country. Yeah, co and, cross country men and women. Yep. And they're in the process of adding on two other sports. Inside, that won't go. But the rebound off Ooh. of... And we got a foul. I call that on Zach Leibowitz. So Jack Raymer was telling us earlier today that they are now recruiting for women's basketball. So they're looking to add that to their list. And uh, men's club ice hockey, too. So a couple of other winter sports. And as Jack Raymer told us, as the school continues to grow, so will the athletic program. Exactly. 31-21 right now, Eastern Nazarene leading. 5.38 to go here in the first half. Nice step through there and two for Cameron Mason. We talk about penetrating and going to the basket. That time Mason made a beautiful move and crossed over, dribbled to his right hand and got the lay-in. Who's he in a 1-3-1 one, one zone now? They've showed a lot of different looks tonight, the Granite have. Trying to find out which one works. He's on the inside and wouldn't fall that time for Depina, who leads all scorers right now with nine points. Pull up wouldn't fall for Zach Leibowitz. And the Lions lead is eight inside. Five minutes to go, four minutes, 52 seconds here in the first half. There's a three for DePina, his second three of the first half, and now 12 points. Yeah, he's played great. He's had a lot of opportunities, too. He's Not only can he shoot the three that we just seen, he's been able to get to the basket and to the rim as well, and he's very creative in the post area. I like him already. Nice player. Called Antonio Luzon for the foul. It's fun getting to see teams that we haven't seen all year, yep. Charlie. And, uh, both of these teams look like uh, they're having some fun as well. And we certainly, uh, except for maybe one instance early on, have had no need for the shot clock. <laughs> we used to turn it over before the shot clock. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting up and down the floor in a hurry for sure. Amandi Weaver now with a couple of free throws. His first two points. Thirty-four twenty-five with four thirty-nine to go here in the first half. Lots of challenges for coaches to start new programs, but you're also getting athletes who are there for a reason they just want to play right exactly if they're coming here because it's a chance for them to showcase their talents possibly to move on and there's other players that have no goal at all to move on but just want to play basketball because they like playing and it gives them uh, an activity that they can uh, enjoy as well as being part of a team uh, program I know Jack Raymer was telling us in year one of this basketball program, they had a lot of great success, and they probably would have gone deep into not only a regional tournament, but even beyond that, 
but they could not because the rule is in the first year you're not eligible to play in the postseason. Yeah, a lot of what you know, what ifs, and right. if that season had played out as it normally would have. That last basket was by Depina. Again. Yep. I got him for 14 points here in the first half. Wow. I tell you one thing. If I was coaching, I'd get somebody on Depina's left hand every single time he's gone to his left yeah, on every basket. They call Jorge Villegas for his second foul. Damani Scott, who has four points thus far tonight, now has five and... Cuts the deficit for the Granite down to t uh, 10 at 36-26. Here's uh, that half-court trap again we saw earlier. Oh, a skip pass over the top, beautifully done. Just red hot as Joey DePina as he hits another three. 17 points for DePina, 17 of his team's 39. Wow, we got a foul called on DePina. Very impressive. He, as soon as he got the, caught the ball, he was ready to fire that up. He's, he's feeling it. But I was very impressed with the way uh, the Lions handled that half court trap by the Granite. They moved the ball and uh, finally got the. Uh, Pass to DePino on the perimeter. But that was from a lot of uh, ball movement and really good teamwork that time to break the half court trap and then end up getting such a good shot. Jerome Stevens gets one of two free throws and the Granite now trail by 11 at 39 28, 308 to go here in the first half. Mano Clark and now Antonio Luzon. Off the mark was Matthew Cawthorn. Lions retain possession and then nice defensive play that time by Jerome Stevens to deflect to Julian Mincy. Right back come the Lions. Clark driving and scores. And a, a full timeout will be called by the Granite as they now trail. 41-28 with 2.36 to go here in the first half. Wow, would you ever known? <laughs> that's the yeah. old adage, why, that's why they the played. Lions have, they had uh, lost the first two games. They got a big 13-point lead here. And the way they've played, they just, uh, that time they were able to get the transition baskets, which we haven't seen. Most of it has been their patience on offense getting a good shot. That time they, they, they made the the steal and uh, get the ball up quick, quickly and get a layup and that's very impressive. It's hard to be patient on one uh, possession and the next time now you go, go to your running game and it will really look good in this particular game, I'll tell you. 13 point lead right now for the Lions at 41 to 28. We touched on the programs that are presently active here at Quincy College. And again, if you have any questions you can get in touch with Jack Raymer, who is the director of athletics here, and he'd be more than happy to help you and they've had answer great, any of those questions. They've had a great relationship with uh, Eastern Nazarene as well, Charlie. You know, they play their home games here at Eastern Nazarene. When we were playing, when I first got to Quincy College back in 78, we played in the old Quincy High gym in the Quincy. It wasn't being used by the team, but that's where we played our games. And we practiced at the Lincoln Hancock School. I believe they practice now at the YMCA. So things have changed, but certainly the partnership between Quincy College and ENC has been great. But again, it goes back to that same idea that you just want to play. You don't really care where you play. You just want to be able to put the ball on the floor and have some fun. Deflected out of bounds, and that ball will be back to the Lions. Lions come in with a record of two and six. You'd never know it from the way they played the first 18 minutes of this first half. Back in the 2-3 zone now. Granted have been 
Trying to get it done defensively. Turning and scoring. Antonio Luzon with his second basket. Yeah, Luzon just uh, used the pivot foot beautifully. They had to finally get the open shot. He was covered on the first look, but used the pivot foot, made a fake, and got the open shot on the turnaround. Inside strong move to the basket. And two there for Damani Scott, his second bucket of yeah. the night, but he has eight points. And right back here, Scott, the slam at home. Wow. <laughs> he was rocking on that one. Slammed that all the way down. But answering right down the other end, Matthew Cawthorn with his first basket of the night. Well, the easiest, the best way to counteract a, a dunk at one end is to nail a three at the other. And again, Eastern Nazarene lead is 14 at 46-32. And we'll have an offensive foul called on the granite on Julian Mincy, who picks up his first foul. Yeah, we talk about it all the time, Charlie. Over the years, all the games that we've done, when a, a team has, has beaten another team a couple of times, the players, even though the coaching staff is doing everything they can not for them to be overconfident, they have to walk into the gym thinking, oh, we, got, we have this game. And uh, tonight, the Lions are showing them that you can't think that way. Back on November 12th, the Granite beat Eastern Nazarene by a score of 96 to 47. And then as you talked about earlier, Buck, a little closer back on December 12th, 85-75. And the Lions here with a 14 point lead at 46-32, 43 seconds to go before halftime. Free throws here for Damani Scott. And I know from your time around the city of Quincy, there you still come across and are friends with a lot of guys who you coached, and you know we're all older adults now, but keep in touch with a lot of them. Yeah, quite a few of them uh, actually coached with me, worked camps with me after they get out of college, and uh, I've actually coached some of their kids, which all boils down to one thing: I'm old. Very old. Yes. Well, I, <laughs> that's a given. They call the foul on Matthew Cawthorn. Yeah, Paul Donahue comes to mind. He coached with me when I was at BC High after he played at Quincy College for me. He ended up as my assistant coach at, at BC High when I coached there. I always felt that if you could get former players to coach with you, they had an understanding of what you were trying to teach and understood what the, the, the whole process entailed. And a foul down the other end on Anthony Peacock. 15 seconds left in this first half and Eastern Nazarene maintaining their double digit lead at 46-35. Free throws Joey DePina with 17 points. It's only in the first, first half. Foul, right, Charlie? On uh, Peacock. Peacock, yes. Which is uh, not a bad foul at that point. Then I thought he had a couple on him, but he only, that's his first foul. So you want to make him earn it from the free throw line, which he did, but Kuzi has to try to get a bucket here to go into the locker room at you know 10, 10 or under 10 would be something to shoot for right at this point. Five seconds. And a three rattles out. The follow, though, up and good. They'll count that one for Amandi Weaver. Oh, that that a, will get us to halftime. What a second effort by Weaver. Didn't, didn't quit on that outside shot. The buzzer was running down, but he attacked the glass, got the rebound, and got the put back to go in. Big bucket at the end of the half. So at halftime, Eastern Nazarene leads the Quincy College Granite by a score of 47 to 37. Big first half for Joey DePina for the Lions with 18 points. And leading the way for Quincy College unofficially with 11 points, Damani Scott. 
And Anthony Peacock also with a good first half with seven, but still well under his per game average of 22 points per game. So it is halftime. I know Jack Raymer had said that uh, they're going to do presentation here, and uh, we'll be turning the microphone hopefully over to Jack and to some folks as we talked about this Jim Sheets tournament. I know you certainly in your years here in Quincy got to know Jim Sheets, and I know they're going to bring out the uh, microphone here and let Jack do some Yeah, Jim Sheets was here. a great guy. I was actually a, a department head on the gym coached a couple of his kids in the rec program so we go way way back there's Chris Bell He's, uh, works for the college he's here as well I see Jim Sheets I see Jim Sheets' son up in the stands I think they, he's coming down now but yeah Jim Jim Sheets uh, was in this city for a long time but he did a lot of work for both ENC and Quincy College and had made a commitment to both programs not only while he was mayor but while he was working in both of those programs so uh, I think this was kind of a special night as Quincy College tries to develop their program with the partnership they have with ENC it's a pretty pretty special night for all of the Sheets family and the mayor is here as well yeah mayor uh, Tom Koch is here in uh, he, Tom actually worked in the uh, mayor's office uh, as an administrative assistant on the Jim Sheets at one time when Sheets was the mayor. So mm -hmm. it's great to see Mayor Koch here. He's, done a, a, he, he's very supportive of both programs as well. And that's how you get things done. If you have uh, leaders in the community that support programs mm -hmm. such as this, they become successful. And you alluded to it earlier how there's a nice working relationship between Eastern Nazarene and Quincy College, too two Quincy schools that are helping out youngsters who, as you said, get out of high school. What do I do now? I mean, I, I can start here and go from there. Right, exactly. And um, I just think it's it's really an opportunity for not only athletes, but any, any person that's not quite sure what they want to do, they can go to a two-year program like Quincy College. I had a niece that went to uh, Cape Cod Community College, and it's, it's the same, same. It's a, just a real good opportunity, yeah. especially if a kid isn't sure they want to live away. They go to a commuting school, save some money, and they get an opportunity to uh, further their education. And in this case, as well as participate in college basketball or, or athletics. Well, we touched on it a little bit earlier too, Buck. How Quincy College will cost you somewhere in the vicinity of six or seven thousand dollars for a year go to a private school forget it not even close and even the state schools are more than double what Quincy College is offering and so a lot of wonderful opportunities here for the student for the athlete and for the student athlete absolutely and we appreciate uh, Jack Raymer and the folks here at Quincy College inviting us over to take part in this Jim Sheets tournament as we said already the tournament, if you will, it's a three-game tournament, if you will, between Quincy College and Eastern Nazarene because Quincy College won the first two. The, the trophy is theirs. But again, with the great working relationship and the National Junior College Athletic Association is an integral part of this. And as Jack was telling us, there could be a postseason even for these kids. Uh, What's better than that? I mean, a, a chance that you play during the season and you have an opportunity that you might even go beyond a postseason and do some traveling is a lot of possibilities. And just as it is here with the school, the possibilities athletically yeah. can get you uh, out of the area. The, the tournament, uh, I guess, a regional tournament is in New York, and right. could go beyond. For, you could go from there. Yeah, if they can win this this area, which is uh, you know a possibility, they could then they go to New York, the next level. It's very similar to the way other. Uh, programs are in the four-year division right. three, two. They're all based on the same format, and they they go local to regional, and then into the national tournament. So, uh, if they uh, make the uh, the tournament, every kid uh, really is uh, benefits from that. Some of the high schools that are represented here from some of the athletes at Quincy College. I think we touched on some of these already. Bridgewater, Rainham, Weymouth, Catholic Memorial has a couple of players here. Weymouth has three players here. Natick, Mansfield, um, 
uh, Tech Boston Academy, uh, the Edward Kennedy Academy. So, and I know the coaches from a, a wonderful article that was in the Quincy Patriot Ledger about the program itself and the success that they've had. And you go back to their first year, they were actually ranked second uh, in, Quin in junior college, um, the, N the NJCAA, the National Junior College Athletic Association, that's unheard of right. in year one to do that. Year two, they took a little bit of a dip, but here they are back here again, as we said at the top, a record of nine and two and uh, having a great season. Yeah, excellent. I think we're about ready. They're going to make uh, the presentation of the Jim Sheets. So Jack Sheets Ramer's uh, going to take over the microphone here and uh, do a presentation for Jim Sheets. And the players who have come back out on the floor <laughs> are here to witness this as well. Funny. <laughs> Mayor's ready to throw up a couple of 15-footers. we got a ball right here. He wants, he wants me out there. <laughs> And you've had, over the years, a great working relationship with all of these people. Yeah, absolutely. Quincy's a great place to live. You grew up in Quincy as I sure well. Did. It's a great place to live. And I've moved to the Cape now, and but my first 68 years were very, very <laughs> good. <laughs> so we're just waiting on some ceremonies here. We're waiting for Director of Athletics Jack Raymer to take over. We'll have a brief ceremony. I think they may be waiting for Easton Nazarene to come out. And then we'll have the uh, second half of today's game. It's 47-37, Eastern Nazarene Lions leading the granite of Quincy College. That's pretty neat what you talked about earlier, too, about the different nicknames that the school has had over the years and always fascinated how those names come about. Granite is pretty obvious with the Quincy Granite Quarry and yeah, I'm I, telling you, I, I, wanted the, uh, I wanted the name to be the Quarriers. I think Quarriers would have been a great... I, I, I question what the logo would look like, but Quarriers well, see, would have been yeah, pretty cool. Similar to what they have, yep. you know, the chisel for yep. the granite. Or you could yep. have used the, uh, uh, one of the quarrymen. True. Chiseling. Yep. The, I, we all had relatives at some point that worked the quarries way back when. Yep. My grandfather was a mason in Quincy. Swam in them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely swam in the quarries. Yeah. I had trouble with uh, anything over 30 feet, though. <laughs> <laughs> and that was only like one time. I'm not a big fan of height. And Jim Sheets has taken a seat. Players are anxious to get back out and warm up. I think this is where uh, Jack Raymer will take over. He's going to have some of the players come on one side and the Quincy College players on the other, and we'll get our ceremony underway. Great, great photo up. Yep. I'm sure the players appreciate it a little bit, but they're dying to get out there and play the game. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special, uh, very brief presentation tonight. My name is Jack Ramey, I'm athletic director at Quincy College. And I'd like to thank the, all the people here at Eastern Nazarene who have been very helpful to us as our, our athletic program grows and uh, allowing us to share your facilities with you. I'd like to especially thank the athletic director, Brad Zodgers here. Brad, I want to thank you very much for bringing us in and making us feel a partnership here. You have been, uh, you've welcomed us as if we were part of the college, and uh, tonight we're here for a special occasion. There's a gentleman in the city of Quincy by the name of Jim Sheets. I think everybody in Quincy knows Jim Sheets as a former mayor uh, of the city of Quincy, but more importantly, a key figure at both our institution at Quincy College and also here as part of the congregation of Eastern Nazarene. He has really spent most of his life, I think, between two places. 
And when we started this series between our, our school, our team, and the program here at Easton Naz, we wanted to honor Jim, and as we did in cross country, we had the Granite Cup this year, which was won by Easton Naz, and it sits in the office out here. So this year, and we hope we can continue the relationship here between Easton Naz and me, and this year the series, and name this after Jim Sheets. This will now be known as the Jim Sheets Cup in the competition between Easton Nazarene and Quincy College in the honor of Mayor Sheets. Thank you. And I'd like to, now I'd like to have the mayor of the city of Quincy, the current mayor, Tom Cole, please come up and welcome and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I first met Jim Sheets in the classroom at Quincy College. I uh, had him as a student, uh, and then I got involved in his campaign for mayor in 1989, and I worked for him for 12 years. I learned a lot from him uh, about government, but more importantly, how to treat people, how to deal with people. So uh, it's an honor for me to be here. Jim was a city council, a state representative, uh, and mayor and chief executive officer of the city, and he was the longest serving mayor until recently. So, he said he was happy that I broke his record. Uh, but, but a top shelf guy, no one ever had a bad word to say about Jim Sheets. He knew how to treat people, and he led the city through some challenging financial times, uh, and really brought everybody together. Uh, I'm delighted and thrilled to be here to honor him with the name of the cup, but more delighted to call him a friend, and so grateful for all I learned from this great mentor. Congratulations, Mayor Sheets. And so now it is, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce him. He's been a friend of mine, and, and uh, I was a former student also. I think I got a, I didn't get an A, but I, I did okay, I think, yeah. But um, on behalf of uh, Quincy College and Eastern Nazarene College, I'd like to present the cup tonight. Uh, let's have a nice hand for our guest of honor, Jim Sheets. Jim? Thank you, Jack. I want to express my appreciation to Brad and Jack and ENC and Quincy College. Uh, primarily because they've been in my life since I walked up Bell Avenue in August of 1953, not knowing one person at ENC, nor, not, nor knowing anyone in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And both institutions took me in as one of their own. Quincy College, where I've taught for over 30 years, ENC, where I've also taught, and where I found myself as, as a young man, just fresh from the coal fields of southwestern Pennsylvania. And I found myself living in a wonderful city called Quincy. Historical rich heritage, and the city is well welcomed. And so when I received uh, uh, an email from, from Jack, who invited me to be here to see you, it was a special occasion for me, and always will be. Because my life has been woven around two institutions that are great, in the city that is great. It's no wonder I had the opportunity to live a life that was great. Now, I'm 84 years old. I don't like to tell my age, but I'm 84 years old, and I did play for the ENC Crusaders back in the 1950s for one year. <laughs> and all three of my sons, Jimmy, Tad and Luke were crusaders. But that doesn't mean I don't love those boys of granite. <laughs> because they're part of what my life has been since 1960. And so I just want to express my appreciation uh, to both of these institutions. And I'm glad that the mayor is here. He was my student. He did, he did all right. <laughs> you know, he ain't kind of good grades. Uh, he's been a friend. 
They do it they always, always done the things for me that made my life better. But we were living in a city where those kinds of people are common. We live in the city of giants. And I watch these boys playing ball out here tonight. They're really some giants. And I just want to express my appreciation to all those who have given me the opportunity throughout my professional life to work with the young people, whether it was on the basketball court, or in the classroom, or in a campaign. I learned every day something new from each one of those young people. And again, I want to say thank you to the bottom of my heart. My family says thank you. And I'm ready to give the trophy. I believe it's going to the guys from President Place, Quincy Brandon, our basketball team. Both of them are my basketball team. And uh, I see Jack here with the whole team. <laughs> the series, Quincy College, alone. Tonight, they played a great game, and, uh, and we appreciate it. And, but the first two games were won by Quincy. So, Jim, I'd like you to present the, the first James Sheets Cup to the captains of Quincy College. Coach. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, guys. Guys, we get one picture. Thank you, Easton Nazarene. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Jim Sheets. Very nice and well done by all involved. And Jim Sheets, nice to see him. God love him. 84 years young. Yeah, it's um, it was great. I really enjoyed the fact that he you know mentioned his three boys who played here at Easton Nazarene. I coached them when they were back in elementary school and middle school and in the rec recreation program in Quincy. And uh, it's really special uh, occasion like this, especially for folks like us that have seen a lot of these players, these people, these fans. It's all a part of the Quincy community, and Jim Sheets was a big part of that community. Sure is. And, uh, we all know that Tom Koch is, uh, the mayor's a busy man, and uh, it just shows respect for what he has, the respect for Jim Sheets, that he would come out and be here for this as well. Yeah. Mayors get pulled in a thousand different directions. and They really do. They pick and choose, and obviously his choice was to be here tonight. Yeah, it was well worth it. It was uh, special. So we still have another ba half of basketball to play here, too. Eastern Nazarene leading Quincy College by a score of 47 to 37. A few more minutes to give the players a chance to warm up. Yep. I'm sure they enjoyed that. and. Uh, Good to participate, but they want to get this game going. Hey, anyone who's wearing a uniform wants to just get back out and just start playing some more. So, of course, I've the coach is all memories here, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, in this gym, I told you when we were younger, we used to sneak in the gym at, at, in the evenings and then try to play. These the back door occasionally was loose or left open, and we'd get in here and play. Well, they had one security light that was on in the gym, but it was enough light to play. We'd play basketball games in the gym. And then later on, as I was coaching, uh, I, me I mentioned earlier, when we were playing, uh, when I was coaching at Curry College, we would play East of Nazarene, and we had, it was great. It was all very close. It was a good rivalry, both teams, uh, Milton and Quincy, and uh, it didn't take long to travel. And we had some uh, real good battles in this gymnasium back in the 80s you know when you think the 80s you think it's not that long ago but it was long ago long long <laughs> time ago we talked about the 83 uh when your 
Quincy well, Junior College well, 90, team won. 90 was 30 years ago. Yeah, so that's just it. You, but you don't think of it that way. But that was 37 years ago. Yeah, we, we, we won it in 83. Yeah, that was a special year for all of those kids. I'm sure they remember it. And you mentioned the fact that a lot of these pl former players are still friends. And yep. uh, they certainly are. Many of them uh, I still golf with. Most of them I still beat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just about set to get the second half underway after the nice ceremony at halftime honoring Jim Sheets and the first annual Jim Sheets Cup. Okay, uh, the Granite scored that basket at the end of the half, which was, I think was a big basket because they went into the locker room with a little bit of a positive frame of mind after thoroughly being beaten the whole half by the Lions in that first half. Lions now come out in a 3-2 zone. There's a nice move and the reverse thrown in by Jerome Stevens, who has five right. points. Stevens took advantage of the baseline. Once he got to the rim, he went over the other side of the backboard to score it. Quincy College come in with a record of nine and two. Lefty follow wouldn't go for Matthew Cawthorn and right back come the granite. Stepping through for an easy two. Anthony Peacock who's got nine points. Yeah, the big fella, he got in there and uh, made a nice smooth move. Made it look easy. It was not an easy move. And his coach, Doug Scott, talked about the fact that he is one of who he looks at as potentially three players on this team that could wind up playing at the next level and hopefully grabbing themselves a scholarship somewhere along the way, and rightfully so. Well, that's what, that would be great. You mentioned uh, Anthony Peacock, Jerome Stevens, and Imani Scott as three players in an article in the ledger that he, Coach, really feels could play again once they are done here. There's another three thrown in for Joey DePino. What a day he's had, 21 points. A great game, but again, talk about the passing by the Lions. They found him on that perimeter. That's a good shooter, and he was open because of the good passing. Eastern Nazarene with a nine-point lead at 50-41. to 41. Oh, that's a nice look inside. Nice pass from Alonzo Minas to uh, Nairon Dramanio. Yeah, Dramanio found the the baseline and he was able to uh, make the easy bucket. Way off the mark and down the other end. Oh, that should be goaltending. Wow, they didn't blow the whistle, but follow is up and good. Germanio with a follow, right? That Look, looked like a goaltending. Boy, to me, sure Charlie. did. Anthony Peacock just tried to time it and maybe just missed it, but. It goes as a good block. Whistle and a foul on the way through. Free throws coming up for Cameron Mason. Call that on Matthew Cawthorn, his third foul. 54 41, Eastern Nazarene leading. Two and a half minutes into the second half. Cameron Mason with three points tonight. We'll get one more free throw. Court pressure now from the granite. Now Dramanio and nice out time of the, the, the granite going with a 1 2 1 1 press, and they were able to cause the turnover. They're trying to figure out a way to put some pressure on the Lions, and maybe the press is where they have to uh, get it done. Former Braintree High standout Anthony Peacock to the corner and that's too strong that time for Damani Scott. Right now Scott the only player for the Granite in double figures with 11 points. Well they left him open again but that time DePina could not knock down the three ball. Now 
stepping through. Miss and the follow. Back up and good for Damani Scott, who now has 13 points. And a steal. Make that 15 for Scott. Oh, nice play there. Another and steal. A steal. Mr. Nazarene's lead is down to eight at 54-46, and a blocking foul will be called on Jorge Villegas. 16.25 to go in the second half. In colleges, they use the three officials. In high school, they use three officials in the tournament, but, but uh, really is a big, big benefit with three officials. You can see the whole court. And Damani Scott has caught fire here in this second half. They're going to keep this press on until the Lions solve it. The old adage of just keep doing it till you stop us. As Anthony Peacock the other way. Dancing through and lost it out of bounds. It'll be Lions ball. Peacock wanted a call. Anthony Peacock already has four other offers to go elsewhere next year. A timeout on the floor. 54-48, the timeout called by the Lions. Sean Foley called a timeout, and uh, this Quincy team's making a run. at 10 at halftime, and we talked about the basket at the end of the half to go in with a positive frame, and... Uh, the Granite seem to have uh, uh, keep keeping that momentum yep. going now at this point. Putting uh, the pressure on the Lions. The Lions had to call a timeout. Well, the full court pressure turned, resulted in a couple of turnovers, which resulted in a couple of, bucks, uh, a couple of buckets for Damani Scott, who now has 17 points to lead the Granite. Joey DePina, 21 for Eastern Nazarene. So we got ourselves a game here, 15-59 to go in the second half, 54-48, the Lions leading the Granite. Special thanks also to the, our friends at Quincy Access TV for coming out and uh, being here to televise the Jim Sheets Cup, Game yeah. 3. We talk about partnerships. QA TV has been great for the city, and sure they has. seem to partner with everyone to get bring games like this right into your own living room. I can remember the days as a steal by Damani Scott, who has really come on here in the second half, and he's got another two. Remember the days of old WJDA, Buck? Yeah. You'd be listening for your name if you were played Little League, but now with the advent of Quincy Access TV, the radio doesn't matter now. I just want to see myself, see my kid on TV. That's right, exactly. It's a lot better. You mentioned WJDA. My mother would have that on the time she got up the whole entire day, that radio yep. station be on. Yep. My father would say, you're wasting electricity. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to attack, Lions. trying to attack the zone. They try to get in into the high post. That's how you beat it, right there. Oh, what a block. And then a second block. The first one was clean for Jerome Stevens. Yeah, that was a great block by Stevens. Lions attacking the zone by trying to get it to the foul line or in that uh, post area. That time they made a great entry pass and it ended up fouling. Cameron Mason picks up his third foul. Naron Dramanio now with five points. So Eastern Nazarene gets their lead back to six at 56-50 with 15-14 to go here in the second half. Out of the corner, line drive three wouldn't fall. Peacock with the follow and the tap couldn't get it. And the rebound to Villegas. Saw Sean Foley talking to one of the officials coming back up the floor. Very friendly conversation. You were one of those coaches when you coached at Quincy Junior College and elsewhere that you were pretty quiet on the bench. Unless you really got 
wired about something. Yeah, I would, the only time I've ever really got angry uh, uh, or showed somewhat anger was like if a player didn't make an effort. I very seldom uh, uh, had a problem with officials. And um, again, if I did, it was because they, they, they weren't running the court and they weren't in the right spot, but not over a call. Damani Scott with the bucket down the other end. His 21st point that ties him for his average per game. And then down the other end, good second and third effort for Nairon Dramanio. The Lions going after the offensive board. That was all hustle right there. They just out hustled the granite to the basketball and got the easy basket. Eastern Nazarene again back up six at 58-52. 14 minutes to go in the second half. And then we get a push. Called on Joey DePina. It's amazing that that was a, a late whistle. It's a very late whistle. <laughs> Second foul on DePina. Isaiah Oresti is into the game now for the Lions. And Peacock wasn't looking. Damani Scott trying to lay it off to him. Turnover back to the Lions. One on one is Oresti. Oh, boy, just casually threw it up and off the glass. And for Isaiah Oresti, his first points of the night. And there's Oresti with a block down the other end. And inside, there's two more for Nairon Dramanio. Transition baskets in a row here for the, for the Lions. And... Uh, they certainly are playing with a lot of enthusiasm. Three is short from Jerome Stevens. Granite got to uh, do some offensive rebounding. And a turnover. Peacock inside. Got hit from behind. The play continues. And out of the corner, that's a two for Damani Scott, who now has 23 points. And a quick timeout called by Granite coach Doug Scott. 62-54, Eastern Nazarene, 12.51 to go in the game. Fun, though, back and forth. I honestly have not looked at the shot clock all night. There's been no reason to. No, it's... It's up and down the floor right now, and I would say the Lions take a little bit more time on offense trying to move the ball, but once both teams get into this transition game, it's get it up as fast as you can and shoot it as fast as you can. And again, a reminder for folks uh, who enjoy basketball, go to quincycollege.edu backslash granite to get information about men's or women's basketball. The women's program is recruiting for the fall season, fall of 2020. And you can get in touch with Jack Raymer at the school. You can email him. You can call him, but he'd love to hear from you. And the program here continues to build at Quincy College. Call a foul on Damani Scott. That's his second foul. And the third on Quincy College. Well, that was too easy inside. As Nairon Dramanio now with 12 points. Dramanio made a good uh, hesitation fake, and the defense just left him there. Long three is too strong for Zach Leibowitz. Oresti. Leibowitz will try it again. Got that one. Seven points for Zach Leibowitz. And they're going to call a reach in. Call that on Cameron Mason, who just picked up his fourth foul. 
The Lions have had success when they've passed against this trapping defense. When they put it on the floor, that's when the Granite have had success either with deflections or steals. So you got to continue to ball fake and pass the ball if you're going to beat this pressure defense by the Quincy Granite. Timeout called by the Lions. They lead by seven at 64-57, 12-01 to go. Damani Scott, 23 points for the Granite. Joey DePina, 21 for the Lions. And again, a reminder for folks who maybe who are in high school who are looking to move on from high school and you're looking for an opportunity to get a great education at a very, very affordable price. Quincy College, it's a place you should be looking. Arresti again. He's a benefactor of good ball movement that time. He's always alert inside and they were able to get that bucket. Up nine now. There's a knuckleball thrown in for a three ball by Carvone Whitewall, who's got five points. Did not see that ball spin at all. A call of foul on Whitewall. His second foul. 66 60. Lions leading. And a steal. Damani Scott. Somehow got it back outside for Leibowitz. <laughs> Under the basket, looked like Carvone Whitewall was celebrating the three, thought it was going in, but just a little bit short. Down the other end, a three won't fall. What an effort inside by Dramanio. was able to get in there and tip the basketball and actually drew the foul. And just by hustling, got to that spot, saw an open spot. The ball came right near him. He was able to tip it. Now he goes to the free throw line. Zach Leibowitz picks up his second foul. Germanio now with 15 points after a quiet first half. He's come on very strong here in the second half. High arcing triple out of the corner from Cameron Mason. Big basket there. Gets it down to four. Now we've got a ball game with over 10 minutes left. 67-63 Eastern Nazarene and another steal. And another slam home for Damani Scott with 25 points. His elbows were over the rim on that one. Wow, did he slam that home. Inside, Oresti for two. Nice move by Oresti. He just makes it look easy. That was not an easy ba basket. Uh, Isaiah Oresti with the second by the. No, it's actually man-to-man. -man. I'm sorry. Nice pass inside, and... Jerome Stevens with his second bucket of the day now has seven points. This has been pretty much a track meet right from the start. And the ball out of bounds deflected out. It will be Lions ball. They're not going to be showing any d demonstration video on defense from this game. <laughs> It's a demonstration and fun. Demonstration of playing ball and having fun. Well, they're trying to get the ball up court, both teams. And Is he back in there, 2-3 zone now. Alonzo Minnis. Got it inside for Oresti, reverse. Track down in the corner by Damani Scott. Job to keep it alive on the baseline, and then Carvone Whitewall fouled. Whitewall did a great job running down that ball on the errant pass, 
once he got it, he took it right back to the basket and drew the foul. That's a good effort. Gravon Whitewall, five points. We'll get to the free throw line. They call the foul on Alonzo Minnis, who picks up his third. White Wall gets his team to within one. At 69-68, and whistle, and I believe a timeout was called. Timeout called by the Lions. Lions led 47-37 at halftime. It's now 69-68. Eastern Nazarene with the one-point lead. As Quincy College just seems as though they're swarming now and Right, the pressure defense is, is if it doesn't cause a um, turnover initially, they weigh you down with that trap. And, and the Lions, who have played great all, all game, they've executed well against the trap, but it's had to do that the entire game. And without turning it over, and just a couple of turnovers has ignited the Granite squad now that once they get that basketball, they take it right to the rim. Mentioned earlier about some of the opportunities. We talked briefly about cross country. There were 14 runners last year, and as you mentioned, Buckets co ed, eight women, six men. And again, they're recruiting for both cross country, men's soccer, men's and women's basketball, and club ice hockey. So the program continues to grow. Get in touch with Jack Raymer or the athletic department at Quincy College. And they'll be happy to talk to you. Great opportunity. High school students who are not sure what they want to do once they graduate from high school. Here's a great place to start looking right here at Quincy College as their athletic program continues to grow. Long three wouldn't go for Alonzo Minnis. Ball knocked out of bounds. Lions ball. Joey DePina has quieted down after a big first half. Ooh, that could have been a travel. Nice work to the baseline, but reverse wouldn't go for Cawthorn. And a whistle and a foul. Or is it a hell ball? Very impressed with Isaiah Oresti, especially in and around the basket on the baseline. He, he, he looks like he's, he's waiting just for his opportunity and he slashes to that, that hole when it opens up, whether it be for a rebound or a pass. And uh, once he gets the basketball, he's uh, very agile around the basket with his hands and uh, he's been very impressive. There's a violation right there. And a lane violation called and no free throws for Isaiah Oresti. Just moved in after the referee had handed the shoot of the basketball. You can't do that. Good call. I hate to see it happen, but well, you don't see that call very often. No, you don't see them make the mistake very often. True. One point game. Eastern Nazarene leads 69 68. And another foul. This time it'll be Oresti on Damani Scott. And the foul on Oresti is his fourth. And this game is all even at 69 after the first free throw by Damani Scott, who now has 26 points. Yeah, Scott's done it in a number of ways. Right now he's at the free throw line for his second one. Offensive rebound thrown right back up and no good for Gavon Whitewall. Lions have some numbers. Oh, nice play though by Zach Leibowitz. And the ball 
out of bounds. Easton Nazarene had an opportunity yeah, on that break, but weren't able to take advantage of the three on two numbers and ended up uh, fouling on this end of the court. Not a good transition uh, right there for the Lions as they're trying to hold on to this lead. It's now tied and they've led most of the game. 26 points for Damani Scott to lead the way. The ball deflected away. Antonio Luzon. Try it from the baseline. I think that's one of the toughest shots in basketball, that little eight footer from the baseline. And Quincy College takes the lead at 71-69. And Damani Scott now with 28 points. And this pressure defense getting to the Lions as they now trail by Ooh. two. I love the way Scott gets up and down the court. He is really uh, something else. 20, well, how many do you have now, Charlie? 28? I am for 28. Wow. Yeah! And we're going to get an offensive foul. Call that on Julian Mincy. Picks up his third foul. So Mincy comes out. Anthony Peacock, who's averaging 22 points per game, has had a quiet night with nine points. That could change in a hurry. Quincy Collison in his, looks like they're in a zone. Here's the three, and it's too strong that time for Joey DePina. Play continues as bodies fly. Back down inside. It won't go for DePina. And the rebound to Anthony Peacock. And then thrown away. Good shots that the Lions were getting in the first half. They are getting opportunities now, but they're not the good shots. They're off balance, and that's a direct result of the de interior defense by the granite inside, it made it tough. And and a three for Nyron Demonio. He's got 18 points. Yeah, that was a good basket, a good ball movement that time. Get back to what they uh, got the lead with in the first half. Mr. Nazarene has the one point lead at 72-71 and the ball. Inside from Jorge Villegas to Joey DePino, who's got 23. And Eastern Nazarene goes back up three at 74 71. Peacock answers. Well, that's a major league move by Peacock. He's got 11. Back to a one point game at 74 73. Five minutes, 49 seconds to go. Very entertaining game, game three of the Jim Sheets Cup. First two games of the three game set, one by the Granite. Now the ball kicked out of bounds by Nyron Dramanio. It will be Granite ball. Charlie, which we'll be working again tomorrow night, Charlie, down at Stonehill College. Stonehill and Pace. In the Northeast 10. Two games in a row for us. That's pretty good, especially at my age. <laughs> Usually in bed early. Yeah, you'll be pounding on the M&Ms by game two tomorrow night. Now the ball out of bounds. And they're going to call a foul. And call a push on Anthony Peacock. His second foul. So come down the other end and shoot free throws. A lot of fouls called now. A lot of fouls in the second half, yep. Pretty quick first half, really. They were up and down the floor with not too many whistles, but 5.17 to go. It always happens when you have an hour and a half ride home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the free throws are good. In any game, free throws are important, but in a, a one-two-point ball game, 
it's magnified. That's a big basket right there. True that time by Leibowitz. Excuse me, by uh, Villegas. Villegas has seven points now. And Eastern Nazarene again with a three-point lead at 76-73. Oh, Ooh, boy. I'm going to call the foul on the Lions, Antonio Luzon. Both teams now are pl playing very aggressive defense. They're not trying to give up an inch and in doing so. It seems like there's a foul on every possession. Damani Scott now with 29 points to lead all scorers. Scott to the 30-point mark. Brings his team back to within one at 76-75, 4.55 to go. And that floater won't go down for Antonio Luzon. Chance now for the Granite to take the lead back once again. Peacock. And they're going to call a blocking foul on the floor. No shot. They call Villegas. That is his fourth foul. And Peacock ties the game with his 12th point. Stays even at 76. 440 to go. Deflected ball. Stolen away. And oh. another slam for Damani Scott. Did he get up. Whew. And unable to tie the game back up again is Cawthorn. Here's Peacock stepping through. And they're going to call a blocking foul. On Antonio Luzon, his third foul. And Anthony Peacock making the free throws when they count. 4.18 to go, and now the Granite have taken a three-point lead at 79-76. Make it four. 14 now for Peacock. That ball just airmailed out of bounds. Possession back to Quincy College. Execution on their press breaker has broken down. They did so well the first three, 30 minutes of this ball game. And right now they're struggling even to get the ball over half court as the uh, Granite defense really uh, has been uh, tough to handle the second half. Peacock. For two more. Well, if, if Peacock gets the ball in that position, he's, nobody's going to stop him at that point. You've got to make sure you defend him before he gets the basketball. And a whistle. And call the foul on Whitewall. Picks up his third foul. Will come down the other end. That is the tenth foul, so two free throws. Actually, the rest of the way for both teams is the Lions have already committed nine fouls. I think a couple of people that looked at me from behind thought I was Dick Vitel. <laughs> yeah, then they, then they looked in your wallet and they realized it wasn't. Well, I, we both had the same hair. <laughs> <laughs> One more free throw for Nairon Dramanio. Makes one out of two. He's got 19 points. He's had a terrific night as well. And a timeout on the floor. 3.50 to go. And Quincy College down 10 
at halftime, 47-37, now leads by five at 82-77. And both teams into the double bonus, so we'll see a lot of free throws over the final three minutes and 50 seconds. I just heard uh, Frank Santoro up behind us talking. He said, what happened to the ENC Crusaders? At That's one right. And they were the Crusaders. So there's a lot of name changes. I know back in the day when Quincy College was Quincy Junior College, any relationship with Eastern Nazarene at that time? Uh, no, we did not have a relationship, but... Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier a little bit, after I left Quincy College, I went to Curry College, and that's when uh, we, we, we ended up playing here at Eastern Nazarene. But Quincy College back then did not really have a relationship with ENC. We played a number of college JVs. We played, uh, we played the Harvard, Harvard uh, mm -hmm. not their JV team, but they had a club team. And we played a number of other colleges that had JV teams, but we did not play uh, ENC back when I coached. Quincy College now a member of the National Junior College Athletic Association. They are in Region 21. And as we mentioned, with their 9-2 and two record, trying to go to 10-2 and two here tonight. Good chance to make the postseason. A lot of the teams we used to play back then, a lot of similar to the teams, uh, you know, we played Bunker Hill and Massasoit, and North Shore Community College. I don't think they play anymore, but we played a number of the junior colleges in the area. Peacock lost it, got it back, and scores. We talked about Anthony Peacock had had a quiet first half, and we said at the time he could explode. Well, he's done that. He's got 18 points. And down the other end, Antonio Minnis now with nine points. Yeah, Minnis followed the shot. It was good hustle to get the offensive rebound and the putback. 84-79. The Granite lead, 3.03 to go. To the corner. And a three thrown in by Zach Leibowitz, his third three of the night. He's got 10 points. Yeah, it was a big basket, especially the way the defense was being played. They, they had to earn that one. And a steal by Jerome Stevens. Down the floor for two more for Gravon Whitewall, who has nine points. Nice floater thrown in down the other end by Nyron Dramanio. He's had a great night as well, 21 points. Yeah, that was a tough, that was a difficult basket over Peacock, who was way up in the air to try to block the shot. Dramanio stayed with it, and a little floater, nothing but net. 89-81. Quincy College leads, 2.03 to go. Peacock with another two, as he's just owned the inside over the last seven or eight minutes. I got him for 20 points. He came in averaging 22 points and 13 rebounds per game. Oh, this game just turned around so quickly. The quickness and the defense of the Granite in this second half was like two different teams. Yep. It's been a 20-point swing from the first half. The Granite trailed by 10 at the break. They now lead by 10 with 153 to go. And it will stay that way after the first miss by Oresti. One out of two free throws. Five points for Oresti. 153 to go, 91-82, Quincy College leading. Looking to make it a clean sweep of their three-game tournament, if you will, for the Jim Sheets Cup. And now the Granite would be content to run a little bit of clock, but no one told Damani Scott. 34 now for Scott. What a game he has had. And down the other end. Won't fall for Minnis. Try to spin it back home was Dramanio. And a held ball will favor the Lions with 124 to go. 93-82.
Big second half of the Granite. And a timeout after the bucket made by Alonzo Minnis, who goes to double figures with 11 points. You give Minnis a little credit for that. He missed the easy one, but he stayed with it, didn't hang his head, stayed with it, got the ball back and, and, and the basket as well. So good second effort. The Granite have scored 56 points here in the second half. And led by a terrific night for Damani Scott. We have him for 34 points. Anthony Peacock, 20 points. Zach Leibowitz with 10. And for the Eastern Nazarene Lions, Joey DePina with 23 points. 21 for Nairon Dramanio. Very entertaining game. And again, our thanks to the folks from Quincy Access Television for coming out and televising tonight's game. Special thanks to both coaches, Sean Foley with the Lions, Doug Scott with the Granite for their help before the game. And, of course, to Jack Raymer, Director of Athletics at Quincy College, for asking us to come on out. It's been fun. Yeah, it's been great, and uh, I've enjoyed it coming back to the hometown. And the Jim Sheets Cup was given to the Granite at halftime. Jim Sheets here as well and made a nice speech at halftime. Now 107 to go. And a foul called on Alonzo Minnis. So free throws for the Granite for Zach Leibowitz. Manny Scott is out. How many is he? Uh, I have him for 34. Wow. I scored 54. In your career? Yeah, my whole, uh, my senior year in high school scored 54. <laughs> he got 34 here. It's a big three months for you. Now down the other end, it won't fall, but the follow is up and good for Alonzo Minnis. Back down the other end. Ring rim rattling slam for Peacock, who's got 22. And a three thrown in by Alonzo Minnis, who's got 14 points. 48 seconds left. Nice block. block. Cawthorn with a beauty. And a whistle. 96-89. Quincy College leading by seven with 40 seconds left. And free throws for Zach Leibowitz. And Jorge Villegas with his seven points is fouled out. And Devano Clark will replace him. Jesus Debion is also in now for the Lions. Matthew Williams into the game for Quincy College. Free throw made by Leibowitz gives him 12 points. Three ball short. Back outside for a three that's off the mark by Jesus Debayon. And with 26.8 left. A lot of whistles in this second half. They call the foul on Matt Williams. Free throws for Devano Clark. So it's Quincy College by eight at 97, 89, 26.8 seconds left. So barring a foul, the Granite do not have to take a shot down the other end. They can just run the clock out. What are the chances of that? I don't think that's <laughs> going to happen, but I just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, 
Seven now for Clark. And there's your whistle. Took about two seconds. Devonta Clark with the foul. Pretty well played game, though, for the most part. Obviously, an offensive game, 97 90 with 24 seconds left. But and I don't recall too many shots that weren't contested. That's right. Zach Liebowitz now with 13 points. He's had a good night as well. Excellent free throw shooter. Final 20 seconds, 99-90. Hang 99-93. Matt Cawthorn with his second three. We're not done yet. And they're going to call a blocking foul. Call that on Alonzo Minnis. 16 seconds left. And Minnis has fouled out. Gregor uh, check it, checking in now is Francisco Luzon, Luzon for the Lions. Problem for the Lions is they keep following the guy who can make the free throws, and Leibowitz makes another one. Sixteen points now for Leibowitz. One hundred one ninety-three. Off the miss by Depina, whistling a foul with six and a half seconds left. DePina couldn't miss in the first nope. half. He's missed a few here in the second half, but he had a great first half and really had a lot to do with the Lions leading by 10 after that, yep. after the half. Clark will get one more free throw. And he's got nine points. Six point game, six and a half seconds left. And that should be our final score. And I don't think they'll count that one. Nope, no basket. Final score. The Quincy Granite come back from 10 down to earn a 101-95 win over the Eastern Nazarene College Lions. With the win, the Granite improved to 10-2 and two overall. With the setback, the Lions are 2-7. and seven. Yeah, it was a great night. The Granite looked good out there and uh, as they continue to try to make it into the playoffs and uh, make a run later on in the year. But overall, it was great. And uh, we thank the folks at ENC as well as uh, the Quincy Granite. And, of course... Quincy Access Television, QA TV, Channel 8.